Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's me, Will, here with one Ian Gibson in his most stunning shirt and most stunning hat. Folks, uh, it's episode 99. Ian's cracking open a Budweiser. Maybe I'm on vacay. I'm on vacation. Because he's on vacation. Uh, it is the day after Thanksgiving. Black Friday, they call it here in America. Hey, you can't say that. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot we were live. I, uh, I love that. I think that's going to be my new joke. I, it's done, but I think that's what makes it funny, is that I just keep pretending like the phrase Black Friday is racist because I don't <laughs> understand what it means, but I bring it back every, every year. Why is it actually called Black Friday? It's because of stupid, stupid accounting terms. Is that when you owe money, you're in the red, but when you're making a profit, uh, it's you in know, the black because you write it red or write it black. So, so Black Friday is historically, I don't think it applies <laughs> anymore. It's typically the day of the year that most stores made up all their expenses. So any sales past this day are pure profit. Gotcha. Um, I'm sick, uh, which is why we didn't pre-record this. Uh, I got a really bad chest cold. Uh, that as far as the four COVID tests I took, isn't COVID. So, um, that was super fun. Uh, you make any Black Friday purchases yet? Uh, do you know what the difference is between a, a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? Uh, it's, neither of them fit in your butt. No, I've never had a garbanzo bean on my chest. That's pretty good. My dad had a joke. That's pretty is, good. Do you know the difference to, between a viola and a violin? Uh -uh. Viola burns longer. Because it's bigger. That's okay. That's pretty good. Uh, sorry, it's just you said, you said chest cold and I... Yeah, I know. I it's the only funny. way I can describe it because I don't think it was quite pneumonia. Um, I have this crazy theory. So I was a little under the influence on last Wednesday. And I was eating popcorn, and I swear with my left hand on the Torah that uh, I breathed in a piece of tiny piece of popcorn into my lungs. Now, Karen's so you telling think, me. So you think your lung is reacting to that? Yeah, and making me sick. Karen says if I had done that, I would have been, had a coughing fit, blah, 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 yes. blah. And also, yeah. your lungs aren't just giant empty sacks of nothing. Like they sort they? of are, but no, mm -hmm. but they have the 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 trees everything and everything. Yeah, trees yeah. and everything. Um, so I don't think that's true. Uh, plus Friday night I wore my voice out at the Smash tournament, and then Saturday I went to a friend's giving party. So I think I win? just wore my voice out and then got. I didn't play. Look, I'm an announcer. Look, it's chaotic energy today. I just need you to know that if you haven't noticed already. Yeah, I've noticed. The Selena shirt pu pulled me right into that. Um. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I, Black Friday purchases. Have you made any Black Friday purchases? You know, I did. It, it wasn't really a Black Friday purchase. It was something that we were like, look, we're going to buy <laughs> this. This is our big gift this year. Um, the idea being we do one big gift shared between us for Christmas and then small gifts off to the side. And we were like, it may go on sale for Black Friday. If it doesn't go on sale, then we're going to buy it anyways. And um, what happened was... I got my bonus from work <gasps> that I was supposed to get earlier this year. They finally cut the check and I got that like last Thursday and I was like, OK, screw it. It's already at a low price. I don't care if it's going to go lower for Black Friday. I'm just going to buy it. So w I bought a real espresso machine. Ooh. And it's do you know anything about. What, I think I think the term is third wave coffee. Do you know anything about that? What does that mean? I don't know. I just heard it from Jan Ochoa on the Bombcast third a couple wave weeks ago. Third wave coffee? I need to look up what it actually means, but it basically describes this renaissance in like home brew coffee in the last 20 years where people are like, Mr. Coffee's not good enough. I need an AeroPress. I need like a $400 grinder and stuff. And I have slowly been creeping into that. Um, I've been using an arrow press, which lets you like you're literally like manually pressing coffee and it lets you like be like a grinds. Uh, my parents bought me like a hundred dollar coffee grinder last year, which sounds expensive, but it was actually like the low end of the super expensive ones. Yeah. Um, so I've been like I've been playing with grind sizes. It's one of those things where like a Keurig, Keurigs aren't good, but 
but Keurig at least is press a button, you get coffee, right? This is like, what if you took every single variable of making coffee and gave you the option to tweak it? <laughs> and then with an, with an espresso machine, it's like you have the you have the, the porta filter, which is the wand with the metal cup. And you're like, I'm, I'm like diving into like, how do I properly tamp it? And they're like, you need 30 pounds of tamping pressure to properly tamp the espresso grounds. And then I was like, oh, well, and then I found there's cool things on Amazon where they have tampers, but they're spring loaded. So they 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 physically stop after like 30, 40 pounds of pressure, <clears throat> which is good because it's one of those things where if you don't tamp them enough, then the water is going to shoot straight through the coffee and it's going to mess up your shot. So it's kind of this risk reward where you can you can reward yourself with like incredibly custom, beautiful, delicious coffee. But the risk is that you are in charge of every single variable now. So if you fuck up one of them, you're going to fuck up the whole cup of coffee and it's going to taste terrible. So I've been having fun with that. I think the the real reward from it so far is it has a steam wand. For those of you not familiar with coffee, basically how you get like frothed coffee or or I'm sorry, frothed milk or milk foam or steamed milk is it's, it's literally they just heat the temperature of the water up. So it creates a bunch of steam. And then it's literally a wand that just shoots steam, like high pressure steam out of it. And then you have a pitcher of milk and you have to hold it at a certain angle and depth so that it creates a vortex, shoots steam into it. And then you have it like right at the top of the milk so that it froths the milk and gets it even airier. It's incorporating air into the milk as opposed to just steam in the milk. And I've gotten pretty good at that. So like even making crappy espresso shots right now and crappy foamed milk and all that, I'm making like the best lattes I've ever had in my life. And it's now, it's great. Is that a Hitachi steam wand? No, <laughs> you don't want to put this on your private bits. It gets very <laughs> hot. Um, um, no, that's exciting. I um, Karen and I are both big coffee people. She um, <clears throat> she would do probably do a lot of that if she worked from home. She did that a little bit when during the pandemic. But she has an espresso, which to me is the it's next good. like is the next level up from a Keurig. Hundred percent. Um, yeah. Also, I feel like that does way too much disservice to the Nespresso, but that is what it is. Nespresso is yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's it's a Keurig. It's a Keurig that actually does good coffee, like yeah, good total touch coffee. Yeah. And I for five, four or five years now, I've been making my own cold brew, which I I yeah. do every week, and then it it makes like a week and a half worth of coffee, which kind of sucks because it means I can never make coffee the same day every week. I always have to like fit it yeah. in. To whatever day it happens to be but it, it's pretty easy to do i just am super forgetful about it uh which isn't bad because if i wake up and i don't have cold brew i'll just do a double shot of espresso which still gives me headaches because it doesn't get to the point of how much caffeine my cold brew gives me which is probably yeah. really bad but uh that's kind of okay with me um my but black yeah, friday I... sorry sorry just no, to bring finished... it up to finish it off, it's one of those things where, like, you and I, we've discussed that we are both serial hobbyists. So we will, like, pick a new hobby and then over the course of months or a year or two, just get, like, progressively deeper into it, which is why you have two 3D printers and I have a full <laughs> airbrush and model paint set up, you know? Yeah. And it's it's not necessarily a bad thing because we take the hobby seriously. It's just that eventually we do start to roll off of it, which I think is fine as long as you're treating it genuine in the moment and you're not wasting money. And I don't think we're wasting money, but it just feels like this coffee for the last year or two has become my new hobby dive. But I will say the nice thing about this versus a lot of my other serial hobbies is like, I haven't built a model in two months, but I still have all the gear around here. You can see it behind me, etc. But coffee, like I drink that every day. And even if I don't drink it every day, Maggie drinks it. So like this morning I got in the habit of getting up before she goes to work. I'll like, I'm able to fiddle with it and make her a fresh cup of coffee. And in a, in a kind of bad way, because you get addicted to caffeine, it's going to be hard for me to drop this hobby because it's always going to be there. Like literally a chemical addiction for me. So I feel like this is a cool way for me to go into this and have fun with it. Yeah. That's great. Um, I'm jealous. I, I want to do that, but also I don't like hot coffee as much as I like cold brew. So it kind of works out that I'm not. As I mean, honestly, just to top it off, if you have any interest in this at all, the AeroPress is it's either 30 or $40. It's, it, it's one of those dinky things that you're like, this looks like some stupid plastic scene on TV thing, 
but it really works and it's dirt cheap and it's a mm. fantastic way to be like oh i need to start thinking about brew time extraction time grind size and it's it's a really easy super cheap way to get into i'm gonna take my coffee seriously yeah totally um my black friday purchase i have a couple things on the list but none of them have gone on sale so it's like i've been yeah. waiting years to buy a synology nas um i bought two six terabyte hard drives like a uh, six months ago when they were on sale um yeah. and they're sitting in the, my desk drawer waiting for me to buy nas um so it's not on sale yet so i was like ah fuck it i won't buy it but i did buy for the cheapest price it's ever been uh one amazon kindle paper white uh, i i love it so much i spent really good it's really good i spent pretty much all day yesterday at karen's parents house being sick in the corner reading it and nobody bothered me and it's, it's so like, perfect it's i so i i read most of my books on kindle now i've been doing it since probably 2011 and we talked about this. I had the guilt at first where I'm like, I love books. I'm an English lit major. I should love physical books. This is a bastard version. But the problem is now I, I just read all the Harry Potter series on my Kindle. So I was reading that straight for like four or five months. And then I flipped over to a paper book and I and it's just like having to hold the book up and be like, OK, I'm holding. OK, let me turn the page. Oh, I don't have enough light and like. And yeah. you can't really read on your side easily. And then you're like trying to read into the crease, but you got to open it. It's one of those things that I hate to admit it, but ebooks are just better. They really are. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I've been reading the Wheel of Time stuff, and those are mass market paperback, which really tend to tuck words in. Yeah. Which I also then realized that's why hardbacks are pretty popular because hardbacks have the larger margins, yeah. so they're not as forced down. But yeah, I I'm really enjoying. It. I'm reading Station Eleven right now by some fancy name with a saint in it um which is very good it's it's a post-apocalyptic it's a literally the pandemic COVID-19 pandemic but worse plot and I believe it came right. out in like 2019 like, like COVID-20 yeah yeah like COVID-20 um and it's like but it, it it weaves these threads of all these characters from before and after uh like this one storyline of this guy who died before anything even happened. And it's very mm -hmm. interesting. So like, I think that's helping me get used to the Kindle. Plus it's so, so easy to read on compared to like computer yeah, screens. Just... Oh, um, yeah, that, that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the magic of e-ink is like, people are like, Oh, I read books off my phone or off my tablet. And I'm like, how do you not get like eye strain and headaches immediately? Yeah. Whereas the kin Kindle, that e-ink tech is like, it's like reading off a page. Like the only difference is like resolution, but it's pretty close nowadays. Whereas like the original Kindle I had wasn't great. It didn't have a backlight, but it was still usable. But now the tech is like super cheap and super great. Yeah. And like you said, the advertisements, they only appear when you lock the screen, which is fine. Yeah. I don't ever, I'm not looking at the lock screen. And uh, when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, it doesn't know what to do. It just shows the book you're reading because <laughs> it's like, ah. Yeah. I, I um, was going to say the one tip is I pretty much have mine in airplane mode all the time because otherwise it will drain battery faster than you would like. But in airplane mode, you can you can go through like several thousand page turns easily. Yeah. And I don't even do the full refresh because there's like the tiniest bit of ghosting. Uh, mm. And I'm like, it barely bothers me at all. So like, and honestly, that saves battery too. So two things on that. I I've developed a bad habit where every couple pages on the Kindle, I'll just be like, I can see ghosting. And then I touch the top to open the menu, which forces a full refresh. And then I touch it again to get rid of the, the menu, <laughs> but it's a bad habit because I don't really need to do it. And then the other thing was I was reading a paperback book yesterday and I was like, there's so much fucking ghosting on this. Like I could see the ink from the other <laughs> side. <laughs> so it's like, I hear you, there's ghosting and I've developed a bad habit, but at the same time, that's actually kind of realistic to a book. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm loving it. I, I'm almost done with this book now. I, I, I've been reading so much more because it's so much more convenient to read on it. Uh, and do you, do you, do you read on your side? You ever read on your side? No, I've never tried it. I, I sit up. It's great. Cause like I'll, I'll hold it. does the Kindle paperwhite, does it have physical buttons? No, you tap the screen. Oh, okay. So that, that's okay. The, my Oasis has physical buttons. So I literally just lean on my right side. My right hand is holding the Kindle and my button, my thumb is on the button and I just, 
just like for like 40 minutes straight it's fantastic yeah it's it's great i i put a couple other books on it uh and plus i can just take books out from the library uh which is perfectly fantastic. so that that i just signed up for i haven't tried it because usually i get my books through another means that apparently is no longer available so I, i'll have to try the, the book rental the ebook rental now yeah, I, I found one through other means that isn't the one that got shut down, but is pretty much mm. almost exactly the same, uh, and used that one, and uh, that gave me a couple good ones. But like I said, the the library one, you get it for two weeks, and you can I can at least for my library, you can re up it four times. So I was like, I'm already gonna point. have anxiety about it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read it. Um, so if you so what is that that's that's 10 weeks total so two and a half months okay because that yeah. that was the thing that worried me was like sometimes i don't read a book in two weeks but if it's if you have that many re-ups and there's probably not people waiting for the copy so they won't prevent you from re-upping it other than the limit then yeah 10 weeks that sounds better and plus you hit on the website for me you hit borrow book send you to the amazon page you say send to Kindle, sends it to your Kindle, and on the Kindle it says return to library. You can also put your Kindle in airplane mode, and it'll be there forever. Uh, so. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, it's because I, I know the other. The, honestly, the biggest thing is I know you got a big trip coming up, and it's just like load a whole bunch of books on that, and you don't have to put books in your book bag. I remember before I had the Kindle, going to college, which was basically like. A 15 to 20 hour trip each way going from east coast of the u.s to the middle east and like i would my backpack would literally weigh 20 pounds because i would put like four books in the bottom of it but yeah. then when i went down to the kindle and it was like this is incredible i have so yeah. much space back i was like oh I'll, I'll buy it before this trip and uh i'll be gone for two weeks and i can test if i really like it and i haven't even left yet and i already really like it so I'm glad you made the switch because we we've talked about it before about how like I was trying to tell you how good it was and you were like no 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 physical books physical books only and I I totally understand that but this is one of those texts that's like you know what maybe maybe these cool kids actually have something good here and it turns out they do yeah. like I I I actually strongly prefer ebook now and I uh, I'm at the point where I don't really want to read physical anymore because the Kindle is just so much more convenient all across the board yeah and the last thing is it's just like i can turn the lights off karen can go to sleep and i can keep reading and it's yep. not as bright as a phone screen or i can put it into dark mode which i didn't know about until karen was like isn't there a dark mode i was like Let me tell. I, I have a problem with i have a problem reading text in dark mode because then it like burns onto your retina you know yeah it's the old <laughs> argument of chalkboard versus whiteboard that teachers used to yeah. have when i was growing up because chalkboards yeah. you create light and whiteboards you get rid of light and i think the problem i have is like the blackboard method like whenever i go on a dark website and i'm reading it for a while and then i look away i just have like that whole black thing with the bright text like oh yeah vision totally. remnant and i hate that so that, that's why I, I i don't think i would ever do kindle dark mode but i i didn't know they had that yeah i can see that uh, okay, that's enough about our Black Friday purchases. Um, oh, I do need to get Gran Turismo. I was looking out for that deal you sent me. I need to check. I think today's uh, the day. What was it, 20 or 15 bucks at Walmart? Yeah, I need to make sure to... I want to see if I can get it digitally, or otherwise I have to ship it somewhere else while I'm away. Uh, but I can do that. Um, let's talk about the games we've been playing. I have to go quickly unlock the door, but Ian, please update everyone on the lovely Dyson Sphere program. Guys, I'm still playing it. I think I'm about to hit 50 hours in my playthrough. Um, I talked about it last week. If you're not aware, this is basically 3D Factorio, but the other big twist it does is you're not on a single planet. You have multiple planets and multiple solar systems. So the thing that I did this past week that was like a big step forward for me was I finally built some space warpers and I started doing that, which means I traveled to a different solar system set up or refinement etc there and then went back to my home system so now i have spaceships going between solar systems grabbing stuff um i also started building my dyson sphere so up to this point i only had a dyson swarm which is basically like you shoot a uh, a solar they call it a solar sail but it's basically like a big solar panel that like floats around the sun um i had a bunch of those 
but what I started doing was the actual Dyson sphere where it's a, it's a single structure. And uh, so I had this like band, partially constructed band running around the middle 30 degrees of the sun. And it's just so cool because the thing is, it's there in the game. So so it's happened to me multiple times now where I'll be running around like fixing conveyor belts and I'll look up and like my Dyson sphere is coming over the horizon with the sunrise and you just see it like Jeez. partially constructed, kind of like kind of like the Death Star in uh, in Return of the Jedi. You know, it's like partially constructed in the sky and it's so it's a lot of fun. I, I I'm I'm still planning on finishing this game. I don't want to say I'm closer because the problem I'm having now is that I'm at like the, the final tiers of tech. But in order for me to build like one thing, it takes like a minute. Whereas in order for me to finish the game in any sort of time, I need to produce a lot faster than that. So like I said last week, I'm going a lot backwards in my tech cycle and being like, like I spent like an hour and a half this morning just going to other planets and being like mine iron ore, turn it into iron ingot and ship it out. And the same with copper and titanium and silicon, because I'm just trying to build up that production so that on my home planet where I have a lot of the later tech production, I have all the raw materials I need to build it. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Um, the other game I've been playing is Pentiment. Will, you've been playing Pentiment, is that right? Yes, I'm not super far into it. I, while I was sick, uh, I was like, oh, I, I'm not working, so I can, I can do things like play Pentiment. And then I got like five minutes into it. I was like, I can't, I can't edit can't videos for work. I can't focus on this either. Like, what am I thinking? Yeah. Um, so I played, I played like maybe 45 minutes and I'm enjoying it, but I need to, uh, definitely save it for when i get back yeah i think i'm about so this game is it's a medieval game it's very talk heavy it's walk around talk to people it's a lot of like static screens and the art style is cool but there's like very little games in it, it, it like very little like maybe once every hour or so you're like hey un unveil this thing like this is everything that i hate in video games right because this is not a game it's basically a, a text heavy choose your own adventure that being said, I'm like I'm like seven hours into this game. I can't stop playing it. It's so good. Like <laughs> this game is incredible. Um, so basically the, the core premise, this isn't really ruining anything, but you are a young artist in 1518 Bavaria and you work at an abbey in a small town and you work in the scriptorium, which means you are uh, drawing and doing calligraphy in the books because the printing press was just invented, but it's not super popular yet. So it's still all about manual reproduction. Um, and so you are you are doing that. You're not super religious. You can kind of choose your background, but basically you're not that religious, but you're there as part of your like uh, learning to be an artist. Um, and when you're there, somebody gets murdered and you have to solve a murder investigation. Um, and you're you're walking around town. There's I don't know, there's probably like 20 or 25 different scenes in the town that you can switch between like different screens. If you think about it like that and talk to multiple different families and people and the monks in the abbey. It's just really good. It feels like every single character is is like a fully realized three dimensional character. The dialogue is really good. There's so many like choices, but the choices don't feel like good versus bad or like a versus b like there are moments where you are just having a normal conversation and you will say something and this little thing pops that says like that will be remembered and you're like oh fuck i didn't even realize i was making a choice but just the just the attitude that i was putting off to the other person the game is telling me like hey the way you just interacted with that person is going to matter later on like, and not in a way where it's like you're about to make an important choice it's like no that's just part of who who you are in the world every little thing is going to start to reflect on people around you and i feel like this is just like an incredible like tour of like 16th century medieval europe of like making choices in your life of being in complicated situations and how you deal with that you know just like small town politics and drama i'm loving it are you loving it i know you've barely played it yeah I i'm really enjoying it uh the i like the text stuff honestly mm -hmm. like yours is much fancier and it's drawn in the way monks would draw it in and then like the people whose house you're staying at is like scratched quickly for like peasants uh i know there were a lot of people complaining about like how quickly the text does it and between my two play sessions there was an update and it was different between those two. Oh, really so i because i noticed when i first started playing it 
it would write all mo- all of Andreas's text out first, then it would go back and fill it all in. And now when I play it, it all appears and fills in as it's uh, yeah. going. So it's it's a lot faster and you can button through it now, which before you couldn't. So because <clears throat> I had just heard Vinny complaining about that on Next Lander and then booted up update. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like solved it already. Yeah. So I was really enjoying that. And then the style, like it's not, uh, it's not my favorite art style. I don't want to look at it all day. I don't want posters of it on my wall, but it's such a great recreation of like janky medieval art of like, yes, the guy who didn't know what a lion looked like or people who didn't know what cats looked like. So it's like such a well yeah. recreation of that, that you're like, it, it it has that Monty Python quality to it without being too goofy. And I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. And it's like, it's like dedicated to it as well. Like, like I appreciate, I don't have to like the art style, but if your game is like, look, all menus, all text bubbles, all, all characters, all backgrounds are going to be this style and we're going to stick to it. Then I love it. Um, this game is also, it's very, I don't know how to say this. Like, I know how to say it wrong, but this is like a smart intellectual artsy game. You know, like this a Rick is and a Morty game, that, game, but but it's also not like I'm trying to think of other like smart games. It's not like, oh, this is a smart topic. It's like, no, there are like complexities in life and character and even in religion. It's not like Christianity is good. It's not like Christianity is bad. It, and then there's characters all along that spectrum. And then it's asking you questions about that based on your background, based on how you feel now, based on events as they're happening. And like there are moments in this game that have made me like stop and like reflect on my own life and choices that I've made and choices that have been happening in the game. And there are moments that are just like, like that are just reverberate with me. And it's just like, I, I like almost to the point of tears where I'm just like, Whoa, like this is an intense moment, but it's not like your dad died. It's sad. It's, <laughs> it's not like I killed a dog in God of war two. It's sad. It's like, it's like, oh man, like I really feel for him being in this like quandary here. And sometimes it's related to the choices you make, but other times it's just like a character saying like, you know, Hey, I, 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 I would love to be married, but I just, it hasn't worked out for me maybe one day, but I've kind of given yeah. up hope and it's just like, fuck man. <laughs> You're just the town blacksmith, but still like, <laughs> fuck, man, it's got Damn. to the point that like I, I, I love this game so much. I can't wait to keep playing it and like how it's embracing like European history and culture. And for me personally, like they keep mentioning like where the town is. I don't know if this is a real town or not, but where they are situated is somewhere that I went and visited in Germany like two, three years ago. They keep talking in Innsbruck, and I spent a couple days in Innsbruck. Uh, my character's background is from Belgium, so he keeps talking about Flanders and all that. And like like the history of it feels very authentic and real, and I'm enjoying that so much that I I went out and bought my next book. Oh, God. Which is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. I'm finally going to read it, folks. I'm oh, not going to be Christian. But like this book... <laughs> And how it's like talking about the Bible and religion and Christianity and how that ties into the region of the history and like personal conflict. And I'm just like, it's so good, right? Like this game is very this I should hate this game. Like this game should be bottom of the list for me, right? But it's not. It's going on the game of the year nominee list. Easy. Oh god. It's so good. It's good, isn't it? It's good. Yeah, it's it's in those like 45 minutes I played or an hour, I was already like I was like, oh, I should read a good medieval history book. And then I was yep. like, oh, I have a couple of medieval history books still at my parents in my most of my collection. And I was like, oh, well, I was like, I don't want to just read like something dry. Like I was trying to find like a, a, um, who's who? Yeah. Yep. That's it right there. Who's, uh, I can, Eric, um, Eric Larson wrote, uh, Devil I can in the White send you, City. I can send you this, which is a book we got in the mail called The Great Controversy. Oh my uh, God. Uh, which is apparently about the the John F. Kennedy as a Catholic versus American Protestantism. I'm, some church sent this to us. It was not Jehovah's Witness, but some church apparently just sent this to us. I can I can give you this book. Oh uh, yeah, let me if you want it. That's exactly what I want. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm glad you like it, and I'm glad I I get to play it uh, soon. Yeah. when I get back. Uh, I wish it was one, on Steam because I'd put it on my Steam Deck. Yeah. One thing one thing I will say though is, 
when we talk about like medieval, like there are plenty of medieval games, but the way that this treats medieval history, like there's this isn't a spoiler, but there's like this this nun that lives in a cell in the church. And it's because she is like, you know, my purpose in life is to have these visions from God and to not be like, I don't even know the full details of it, but it feels like one of these like weird little Catholic wrinkles, but she's not a prisoner like she has chosen this life. And it's such a cool little like medieval detail that I would love to like read more about that, you know, and they keep talking about like this is in the middle of the printing press starting to take off. So there's all these like printers and they're like, hey, what if we there's no typeset for Hebrew or Yiddish? So I'm going to come up with that so we can start printing, you know, Jewish books. And uh, it's just all these little details that are awesome, which is so much better than like 99 percent of medieval games like fucking for honor, which is like, hey, did you know that in the medieval era there were people with like six foot swords? And it's and this is just like, no, let's talk about like, what does it mean to live like? Um, I hate to keep going on this, but I'll bring it up as the final point. When I was in high school, I had a really good AP a U.S. history teacher. Um, mm. And I remember talking to him about a European history class that I was taking, like medieval history. And I was like, I don't quite understand. And he goes, just think about it this way. Like the whole thing about the Renaissance before the Renaissance, all people cared about was heaven. Right. So it was like their eyes were on God all the time. So it didn't matter if they were suffering in life. It didn't really matter what was going on around them. For most people, it was like, it's okay to suffer. We don't care. We don't need to get a better life. We don't have to get more money, etc. It's all about God and worship to God in the Abbey. But with the Renaissance, their eyes went from heaven down to their own hands. And they said, what can I make with these hands? What can I learn? What can I do with these hands to make the world better around me? You know, kind of that shift from always thinking and talking and yearning towards heaven down to your own current station on Earth. And that's what this game feels like, is there's like this tension building between, you know, how these people interact and whether they are more concerned with religion or their day to day and how those conflicts overlap. And it's just so many different themes going on in this game. It's fantastic. I got to stop talking about it. It's great. You guys got. <clears throat> yeah, I'll play it. Um, I didn't get to play too much in the past uh, week since the last episode i did finish citizen sleeper i really enjoyed that i i played out a couple storylines i actually hit credits and then after those credits it it let me back in and i finished another couple storylines and then those storylines seemed to be more permanent because the ending the final ending i chose was leaving the area of the game so um mm -hmm. that was fun i i really enjoyed that game that hit on a lot of emotional levels uh not quite like i'm teary-eyed or something but you feel that like like pit in your chest you're like oh man that hit pretty hard um stuff so that was really fun I, I really like the mechanics of that game just like doing your cycles spending your dice uh like once you have that under management then you're just like you're literally playing the game at that point and uh just reading yeah. through these storylines and stuff it, it was really fun uh i, I want to go look up like stuff i've missed but that's good and then signalis i've been playing a lot more of uh, i'm probably like three or four hours into that uh, my one complaint, that game's great. It has great atmosphere. Uh, my complaint. one complaint. <laughs> it's a classic joke. Inventory space. You have like six spaces in your inventory and there's always stuff. And I get it. You want me to like go back to the box and dump things and all that sort of stuff. But just let me pick everything up. Yeah, make it play. an option. Make I just it, make play it like your a... game. Make it a Celeste style thing where you're like, hey, do you want this added difficulty or not? Do you yeah. want inventory management or not? Um, that game's super fun. It's super weird. I think I know what's happening. Um, there was like a scene where I was like, oh, that kind of looks like that. And then you move to another room. And then I was like, oh, that's definitely that. Um, so we'll see what's happening with that. But I I'm just kind of enjoying having... I don't know. There's like some first person scenes and stuff. It's so weird. Wow. It's such a weird game. Uh, and they added the, yeah. this like signal finder in your menu now. Ooh. It's like so crazy. I this game. I, again, I only played about an hour of it. I really enjoyed it. But the problem was I just don't like these like survival horror inventory management. Excuse me. Inventory management like Resident <laughs> Evil type games. So yeah. I am very excited for the game of the year discussion and for Jake's upcoming video that he's working on, because I want to, I want to understand and appreciate and know about this game, 
but me personally, I don't want to play it. So yeah. I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun. And then uh, Deep Rock, as usual, uh, that new season. I finally hit some of the new events in that, uh, and it's pretty cool. So so that's uh, that's two games on the Game of the Year nomination list, Signalis and Pentiment. It's going to be cool. And Citizen Sleeper's on there as well. So Yeah, yeah. I just Good mean that was already on there. So we've we've added to this app. Oh, yes, yes, totally, totally. Um, and Dyson Sphere. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm Dyson. just kidding. That came out last I'm going to wait. Year, right? It's still in. It's still in early access. And oh. I, I don't think we've talked about this, but I feel like the unwritten rule is a game gets nominated once, period, in its entire lifetime. So we can choose if that's early access or if that's at launch. Yeah. And I'm not sure how much is left for launch, but there's definitely some gaps. And so I'm. I think I'm just going to wait for launch on this and see. And then if I'm still feeling crazy about it when it launches in next year, year after, whenever, then I'll put it on the list. Then. Nice. Sweet. Uh, moving on now to the news. It's time to play the news theme, which is this button right here. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though. Unlike Factorio, Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Thank I, you. I just, I just realized that it kind of sounds like nudes. I mean, that's the last time that song's ever going to play. So here's the nudes we're talking about nudes it's gaming nudes what's up nudes you know zach is one of the few people i don't think i would ever want to see nude now zane I'd probably just be disappointed to be honest the zane or <coughs> tane i think it's zane right who's tane? tane you've never seen the paul rudd sketch from uh oh, and Eric? yeah <laughs> computer <laughs> show me a <laughs> A nude oh, Zane. I love that sketch so much. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> God, Tim and Eric love it. Anyways, it's oh. the news. Will, what do you want to talk about? Um, tell me about Microsoft and their $69 billion Activision takeover and why yeah, Ian so... Gibson thinks it's not going to happen. So so I feel like Kyle and I had a had a, a bit of a tiff over this a couple weeks ago. I think it was off air, but there's so much news coming out of the Microsoft Activision uh, takeover or uh, uh, acquisition that we can't talk about it every week. So it's kind of waiting for big things to drop, big news to drop. And unfortunately, the big news this week is from Politico, which says, according to the headline, quotes, Fed's likely to challenge Microsoft's sixty nine billion dollar Activision takeover. Nice. Um, but he, and everybody's like, oh, look at this. FTC is going to block it. FTC is going to block it. But here's the thing. I'm going to read you some quotes from this article. OK, you ready? Do this is right. from the article. Read them. Um, quote, the Federal Trade Commission is likely to file a likely to file an antitrust lawsuit to block Microsoft's uh, takeover of Activision Blizzard, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. Um uh, sorry, I'm skipping some stuff here that doesn't matter. A, a lawsuit challenging the deal is not guaranteed, and the FTC's four commissioners have yet to vote out a complaint or meet with lawyers for the companies, two of the people said. However, the FTC staff reviewing the deal are skeptical of the company's arguments, those people said. That's it. That's all that's in this, arg this article. This article is not good. They yeah. basically went to three people and they felt good enough to publish them. But all those three, three people would say on background is like, yeah, they may do it. You know, we're a little skeptical, but it hasn't happened yet. And it's just like this is even a good rumor. This isn't this isn't like the uh, Roe v. Wade leak where they leaked the entire opinion several months in advance and it made it clear this court was going to overturn it. This is just people who have knowledge of the matter going, yeah, they may sue it. They may block it. Who knows? <laughs> uh, we haven't even talked to them yet. And it's just like this. I, so that's why I wanted to talk about this article, because this is a big fucking nothing burger. And Will, before you were saying that, like, there were so many details and so many rumors and nobody really it feels like nobody really knows what's going on with this deal. Right. Yeah. It's like so many people have opinions on it that at this point, nobody's opinion matters because like, like there's so many trusted people on both sides. It's like it could go this way. It could go that way. It's like, yeah, it could go yeah. anyway. So let's stop talking about it until we know something. 
Yeah, um, and even the um, even the whole like uh, uh, PlayStation Call of Duty deal that keeps changing because it was, you know, place Sony saying PlayStation is gonna uh, uh, Xbox is gonna not gonna allow Call of Duty on PlayStation, and Microsoft was like, well, we still have a four de- four year deal in place. And then uh, Sony said, no, you're going to take it. And then Microsoft said, we're going to have it as long as there's a PlayStation. And then it was leaked that it was a 10 year deal that they offered. And then people were like, well, that's not forever. That's only a 10 year deal. And it was just like, here's here's what I'm trying to say with this article. Look, this deal's not done. It could go through. It could fail. But there's a shitload of rumors and people with opinions for valid reason, because they're from Microsoft or from Sony or they're Microsoft fanboy or they're Sony fanboy. So just be careful. This is really like a PSA on, on media literacy. Don't hate, take the headline. Don't take the rumor at face value. Like dig into it. Read the actual article. Read it closely because yeah. like this political article, it uh, quite frankly, this should not have been published. This this There's not enough here to make a type of decision to publish a headline that says Fed's likely to challenge. That there's just not enough here. Yeah, come on, Politico. It's I a would shame they're actually this they, article. they're actually a good website, which is why I'm yeah. surprised. Um, next up here, the worst Pokemon game ever to be released has sold a unbelievable ten plus million units in three days, including four million from Japan alone. That's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Can I let me run through? There's four things here. Number one, this is the biggest Pokemon launch ever. Okay. This is the biggest Switch launch ever, which is a little bigger, right? Uh, when you think about Animal Crossing, etc. This is the biggest Nintendo launch ever. And this is the biggest console exclusive launch of all time. Like, this is the most any one video game that is only available on one console has sold ever. These are bonkers numbers, right? That's crazy. I I like I want to play this game. Honestly, right now it's not a good time because uh, I'm building a Dyson Sphere. It's like the the other part of this article. Well, the other part of this that isn't in this article is that apparently this game runs like absolute garbage. I was hearing uh, there's the the thing going around where if you plug in a second controller. And you yeah. use both joysticks at the same time. You run twice as fast. Uh, the thing I saw last night was apparently people saying like, hey, if you move the game from your SD card to your internal memory, it actually gets rid of like the biggest frame drops. Um, and but other than that, people are saying it's like the best Pokemon game they've ever played in terms of mechanics and gameplay. So it sounds like there is a fantastic game here. It's just really doesn't yeah. run well. And and with that extra controller thing, it's not just any controller. It's a I think it has to be a third Joy-Con in handheld mode. Like oh, it's not weird. it can't be the second Joy-Con. Um yeah. and it's only I, in one direction. Yeah. It's wild. But anyways, this is I mean the, I think this shows the power of two things. Number one, Pokemon's still hot as shit. Oh for yeah. good reason. Pokemon makes great stuff. And number two, the Switch. There's a reason why it's is it the best-selling console of all time now, or is it just about to pass the PS2? It's over 100 mil. Yeah, I'm, that's something I'm not sure. But it's it's um, a crazy popular it, console. So you combine those two things, like, isn't Pokemon the biggest IP in the world, and you put it on the most popular console possibly ever? It's going to sell like gangbusters. So honestly, good for them. Because I'm glad they they're doing they're mixing things up and they came up with a game that plays well. Bad for them because apparently this game doesn't yeah. play well. So I I didn't realize actually talking about the Switch it it isn't technically a Nintendo console it's a handheld. Um, I think I, I think they've said both though. <clears throat> yeah 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 actually, but like the because I was trying to I was doing work, stuff for work and looking up the Wikipedia because I was trying to get dates of all the console startups and. Uh, it kept all the articles for Nintendo consoles kept ending with the Wii U. I'm like, what? And then I like clicked over yeah. and it's it's specifically only under handhelds. So I was like, I, yeah, I guess that's technically yeah. true. But I feel like if we were bad people, we could start a rumor that Nintendo considers the Switch as a handheld, which means they're actively working on their next console. <laughs> that's awful. That's but yes, they are, folks. You hear it here first. Subpixel exclusive. Uh, we talked to yeah. the feds. Um, 
Next up here, sorry, I was just looking ahead. Uh, God of War Ragnarok's director says he wants to work on a Castlevania game next. Yeah, that's pretty this is fun. Sony, Sony Santa Monica game director Eric Williams. I, I think there's two questions. To this is number one, do we want this? And number two, what do you think this game would be? You, you're 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 more of a God of War fan. I mean, you've yeah, you, you love that baby boy. I I mean, honestly, a third. A, I mean, Shadows of uh, the Castlevania Lords of Shadows. I played like half of the first game. Was really fun and enjoyable. So mm-hmm. if you want to make a 3D, uh castlevania game kind of like god that, of war kind of like that so, so so that's what you think it would be it would be a reboot it would be let, let's go all the way let's say it's exactly like god of war it's third person it's uh one shot it's cinematic but it's also about like group the combat castle. yeah and there's some sort of like adult story to it uh yeah See, not i don't think i would like but... that I don't think I would like that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't mean in the exact style of God of War. I just mean like not a 2D Castlevania game. Yeah, um, yeah. But see, I think I think that's my problem is, again, I haven't played any of the Castlevania games, but I feel like what makes Castlevania cool is that it is a 2D side scroller with a lot of like exploration that whole like Metroidvania, like you're not on a linear path here. You're um, the combat's fun. You're picking up items out of order and combining them in weird ways none of that absolutely none of that works in a semi-linear modern god of war fashion like that's just not as much fun that's that's getting rid of everything about castlevania that people like other than the sexy vampire lore you know yeah and i think i mean i actually don't know how many other than symphony of the night are metroidvanias um aren't isn't aren't they all like that or are they all i mean one two and three are not Symphony of the Night. I think Ari of Sorrow is. I don't think the Lords of Shadow games are. Yeah, I don't know much about um, it. Yeah. Um, but honestly, two kind of is. When I think about the Castlevania game, that would get me excited. And again, I'm not a Castlevania fan just because I haven't tried them out. But if I, if somebody announced this game tomorrow, I'd be like, heck yeah, it's time for me to play it. Give it to the Shovel Knight people and tell them, hey, you have to make a 2D side scrolling Castlevania game. And within those constraints, they'll go hog wild. Give it to the people that made Celeste. You know, I think there's still a lot of fantastic. Give it to the people that made Metroid Dread. You I mean, don't have honestly, to stray that far from that formula. There's still so much that can be done incredibly well within that. Bloodstained was so good already. Like that is yeah. the modern Castlevania. So unless yeah. like that's why for like 3D, I would just make like a 3D game set in the Castlevania universe with those sorts of if you want to hold true to like metroidvania stuff just make it like metroid prime uh sort of style um but i just i just hearing this it's like again i'm adding a lot of my own context and personal opinion here but it feels like they went to god of war and they said the old god of wars are kind of stupid aren't they they're just like stupid bloody action games what if we made it more mature what if we had story that mattered? What if we slowed the action down? What if we did a whole bunch of like cool techniques, like one shot the whole thing, you know? And I don't want them to do that to Castlevania because even the Netflix series, which was pretty different, still had that nice tone on it and the, the ridiculous action, but added a lot of like emotional story depth to it. I don't. Yeah, I don't. But I think I you're also giving people. I think you're giving too much credit to God of War the reboot it was not that it wasn't like last of us or they were trying Uncharted. they were trying yeah but it's way more fun and exciting than in the it's combat. way more yeah. like uh i would call god of war more campy like they're definitely having fun with it uh, yeah which, i don't which is nice i don't know what i'm trying to say here but I, I think what i'm trying to say is just because somebody made something good doesn't mean they can make anything good oh yeah totally like my only thought with this is like i would play a version of god of war that was just a castlevania reskin but is that going to be a good game no would i play it probably um and and i had the same thought when they announced the new battlefront games it's like would i just take a battlefield reskin with star wars yeah is that what i want no but if that's the bare minimum am i going to be happy probably 
and they still fucked it up. That's that's a perfect analogy though, because the problem with the new Battlefront games was they tried to like triple A it. Like they focused so much on like on like graphics and experience on, and and on like cinematics that they just like the core gameplay has so many like n- unnecessary animations and fluff on top yeah. of it that it doesn't this feel good. good. Anyways, uh, <coughs> next up here, a new AAA Alien game is supposedly in devel- in development according to Insider Gaming uh sources uh, oh there's an update here. <gasps> Sources have said that Grasshopper Manufacturer will be developing the project. I'm I'm looking it up. They did No More Heroes, No More Heroes 3, Killer 7, Lollipop Chainsaw. Ooh, so like a super gory action fun. That. Yeah, actually, that's the, pretty much the only way to get me interested in an alien game is don't make it horror. Just I mean, make it... I'm happy by this, but also this line of saying, unfortunately, Insider Gaming wasn't able to verify the developer behind the project. Well, I guess not verify the developer, but learn that the game is slated to be survival horror that will take inspiration from franchises, including Dead Space and Resident Evil. Why wouldn't you say franchises like Alien? <laughs> well, I think Just they make mean an Alien Isolation franchises. too. That's all yeah. I want. So the, I think I think I, I kind of put this on here because this is a little bit of news, but also like you want it to be Alien Isolation too, right? You feel like that space hasn't really been filled. I just think those games played so well that. I would just take another one with a different story. Like, I don't need to be Amanda, uh, Sigourney Weaver daughter again, but I would take another, another game in that, in that world. Uh, it was for me, you know, I didn't, uh, now that we mentioned it, like no more hero killer seven, et cetera. I want deep rock galactic, but it's aliens. So it's not it's not about horror. It's about like there's a bunch of aliens coming, set up turrets, you know. And it's like it's still like a first person, but it's like more about like like horde mode. But but again, it in the head in my head, the thing that I'm not expressing well is I want the tone to be like there's a bunch of them coming, get them, you know. Yeah. Not like oh my god, it's coming every like like there were fun parts of Aliens, Colonial Marines when we played it, yeah. where it's like it's like almost like starship troopers you know it's like it's like campy fun military versus endless bugs um it, I, I want that <laughs> alien game it's interesting because jake had posted those clips of alien fire team which karen had played and enjoyed and i haven't touched but when i watch those clips like yeah it's not great writing not great voice acting but i feel like it nailed the campiness yes of aliens yeah. really well so that's why i was like I get what you're saying and you're coming across, but I think this guy yelling about like the worst line ever is like very funny to me. And Karen had a yeah. blast in that game. It's not some perfect game, but it's literally close enough third person deep rock galactic as you can get. Yeah. So like if they want to do I, more of that. I yeah, do that. My preference, do it first person, make it four player co-op like, like a vermin tide or left for dead, but aliens like, yeah, that right there, boom. You'd have a lot of fun with that. Totally. Um, <clears throat> is there any of this news here in middling or cut line you want to talk about, or you want to boogie out of here? Yeah, let's boogie. Okay, folks. Thanks for tuning in if you're watching this live. If you're listening to us on YouTube or your favorite podcast, then I don't think... No, I think, thank you for doing that. Uh, we will be back... Yeah, I was, I was just about to say, folks, we are going to take off local chat for the next two weeks. The reason being, we have a brand new relaunch of local chat planned for episode 100, uh, the week of December 12th. So we're going to take yes. two weeks off. The first time we've ever taken time off. Will's traveling. I've got stuff going. We've got prep to do. But we're going to come back strong for episode 100 of local chat. Yes. And I believe you're going to try to do game awards a little bit in the background. Yeah, uh, I'm going to put it in the tiniest picture-in-picture picture possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't uh, care. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Saturday, what are you doing Saturday? Anything Dyson Sphere? Yeah, I'm going to play weekend? Dyson Sphere. I might as well. I'm playing it. Yeah. Might as well. So uh, check our social channels, all that sort of stuff. I will be away for two weeks, so just message me on Discord, and I won't answer you. Um, Subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our website. 
bring you all sorts of things like our new merch line that you can buy. It's fantastic stuff. Um, Jake's Signalis video is coming out next week. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be incredible. Uh, and just hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and have a great December. I think that's about it, folks. So we will see. Oh, we're almost at the end of the song here. God. Almost. I love waiting. Almost. For almost. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. And we will see you all next week. <laughs>